My name is Marta, and in this Red Gaming Tech video, I am here with the latest from the tech world as per usual. So what do I have for you today? Well, we're going to kick things off with an interesting AMD piece as an RX 500 X series has been spotted on the AMD website. Then we have some news regarding the Exynos 9820. And then we have some less than brilliant news for those of you who might use remote keyboard. And then finally we got a new entry into the PC game store market from Razer. So as I said, let's begin with the 500X. So some very sharp-eyed folks managed to spot the fact that a new lineup of AMD Radeon RX 500X series graphics cards has been spotted on the official website. Now at the moment there is pretty much no information other than what I just said, but it is interesting that it has spotted up and that AMD has yet to really make a comment on it. Now there has been a lot of speculation that we're going to be seeing a 500 series refresh and the 500X is probably that, that would make the most sense. It could even be in 12nm because of course in September of last year they did announce that they'd be introducing a graphics refresh using 12nm but info on this was very thin on the ground and there was not even a peep regarding this at CES back in January so that led many to believe that the whole thing had just been chucked in the bin for whatever reason they probably couldn't make it work for you know perhaps it was too expensive to implement the price would have been too high or it could have been a million different things when it comes to something as complicated as a graphics card many things can and probably often do go wrong so it could be that or it could be something else entirely but sensible money would be on some sort of refresh so all of this is nothing more than speculation of course we can only wait in the wings until amd deigns to tell us what it actually has cooking but i'm intrigued to say the least as I said, however, the next topic on our list is going to be the Exynos 9820. So, according to a tweet from a leaker by the name of Ice Universe on Twitter, who has a bit of a reputation for leaking not only smartphone details, but Samsung's internals, mentioned that the Exynos 9820 is currently in development. But other than that, they don't really have a whole lot to say. Just that, again, the SoC is currently being worked on. However, it does kind of tie into another report just a couple of days ago from PhoneArena.com who basically said that Samsung have finished the development of 7NM manufacturing technology six months ahead of schedule. So it wouldn't be outside the realms of possibility that we're going to be seeing this used in the Exynos 9820 or that could be for the following iteration after that as of course they only just finished it ahead of schedule as I just mentioned. So it could be, say, just for example, the Galaxy 11, if that's what ends up being called, that uses 7nm, or it could be the Galaxy 10, which is most likely going to be using the 9820 Exynox, or it could just be not used. I mean, that's possible, but not very likely, let's just put it that way. But uh, weird if things have happened, to be honest, with technology. It's just weird sometimes. Technology gets developed, a bunch of money poured into it, and then just in the bin, yeah, whatever. Being slightly facetious, of course, but you get my point. Now, the other thing we can talk about is how they might be using their own mobile GPU for the Exynos 9820 phone, whatever that ends up being as well. As you may recall, back in May of this of last year, excuse me, there was a job opening which revealed that they were planning to make its own mobile GPU in the future and that would therefore be waving goodbye to ARM. Now, of course, just because they are working on it, does, again, doesn't necessarily mean that it'll be ready in time. And, of course, they may have decided to scrap those plans if it didn't work out as they expected or most likely they're still working on them and we're not going to be seeing that come into play for a while or they could completely prove me wrong and they're going to be in the next iteration but given that the job opening was listed only last year i would expect it to be next year possibly that we'll start seeing things come out regarding what that mobile gpu actually is Hopefully, whatever the 9820 ends up being, it's improvement over the 9810, which overall has been a bit of a disappointment for many, as it fell short of its competition, which of course is the Snapdragon 845. Now, given that the 9820 is going to be taking on the Snapdragon 855 Fusion platform, hopefully we don't see history repeat itself, but we're going to have to wait and see, as there is very, very little to go on at the moment, and... We can't really say until we see at least an inkling of what Samsung have cooking for us with the 9820. 
However, let's move swiftly on to Intel and Remote Keyboard. Now, this is a little bit of an older one that I like to cover. However, I do think it's still worth mentioning as I haven't really seen this anywhere else. However, according to ThreatPost.com, Intel is basically putting a Intel, an, an, uh, sorry, not an Intel, an Android and iOS app called Intel Remote Keyboard in the bin after researchers discovered that attackers can inject keystrokes into a remote keyboard session when in use. Now you might go, okay, what the hell is Intel Remote Keyboard? And well, obviously it's an app, but it works in conjunction with the mini PC platform called Next Unit of Computing or NUC with the Compute Stick. Now NUCs are fairly similar to a Raspberry Pi and a compute stick is about the size of a large flash drive and can be used in various applications that you might expect, similar to a Raspberry Pi. And basically the keyboard app allows people to control their NUC and compute stick devices with their smartphone or tablet using the usual array of Wi-Fi, blah, 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 blah. But basically we have a critical escalation of a privileged vulnerability in all versions of an Intel remote keyboard that again will allow an attacker to inject keystrokes as if they were there as a local user. Now it doesn't stop there unfortunately as there's two additional vulnerabilities for the remote keyboard and these bugs quote allow an authorized local attacker to execute arbitrary code as a privileged user and following on from this Intel basically said that they're going to be discontinuing the product. And they said, quote, Intel has issued a product discontinuation notice for Intel Remote Keyboard and recommends that users of the Intel Remote Keyboard uninstall it at their earliest convenience. But according to Intel, the fact that it's being discontinued is not actually anything to do with the security vulnerabilities. It was already planned for that. But given that they've had some issues, shall we say, with security lately, I mean, they kind of would say that. But, you know, that might be me being overly cynical. But... Regardless of their motivations for discontinuing it, it is being discontinued and if you are a user of this I would recommend you uninstall it unless you absolutely don't have any other alternative to it as these vulnerabilities are quite serious to say the least. But let's finish things off on a lighter note as we have yet another PC game store entering the market from Razer and there's going to be a link to this in the description below this video. This isn't a sponsored thing or anything. We could just use a new competitor. Because, you know, Steam kind of has a monopoly on this sort of thing, and Razer definitely have the chops to potentially take them on. Probably just distributing game Steam codes, but a lot of people won't play a game unless it's on Steam, so I can't really blame them for that. But the point is, there's some pretty nice deals on there, actually. Like, just looking at the front page, Wolfenstein and New Colossus is like 60% off. Pretty crazy. So, if you're looking to get yourself some games on the cheap, then uh, check out the link below. Just a quick FYI for you all. And if they can keep these kind of deals up, then it's always nice to see another contender entering the market. So, with all that said, that is me done for this video. Hope you all had a lovely weekend. Sadly, the grind must continue as it's Monday tomorrow, the dreaded, dreaded day. I'll see you next time.